creating visio files. Previously, in the module Visual Overview, we saw that we can have a graphical presentation for a view, an element, a service. In this module, we will take a closer look on how to create those graphical presentations using Microsoft Visio. Let's take a look at that. So in the Creating Visio Files module, we will first take a look at the objectives. And then I'll sum, uh, sum up some of the features that we will use in our exercises. Some of the basic functionality uh, is going to be touched upon here. We will use the right click menu extensively because the editing uh, functionality is available in that right click menu, allowing us to assign a new graphical presentation to our view. But if we have a graphical presentation, we will need to do some editing of the shapes in Visio because we will have graphical presentations, for instance, for some of the subviews or elements or parameters. Uh, so that's linking the shapes to objects in DataMiner. And we can do that linking easily with the online editing. So we'll go through that step by step with some demonstrations and exercises. There's also a uh, tool that I'm going to show you briefly with the removal of unused Visio files that you can uh, use in the DataMiner System Center. And we'll wrap it up with a final exercise that takes it a little bit a step further with some real-time data, uh, nicely summing up all of our features there. So let's take a look at that. And uh, first of all, the objective of this module is to get you started with some of the basics of Visual Overview. Visual Overview has a ton of features, a lot of functionality. We are not able to touch upon all of them. Uh, the objective is to get you started, to be able to assign a new drawing to a view, uh, to make some uh, graphical presentation and to link it to some of the basic things like an element view and show some real time data on your graphical presentation. There are some more advanced courses available, so you can check out the other videos and courses on DataMiner Dojo to learn more about this. So um, there is also the dcpdma.skyline.be and in there you have a few linking shapes. Let me pull that up. I'm connected here to the uh, system dcpdma.skyline.be and if I go to the uh, first subview here, linking shapes, you will basically have a nice drawing that shows you all of the functionality, well, not all of the functionality, but uh, all of the most commonly used functionality uh, is available in this uh, drawing. So if you want to know how linking to an object like an element or a view or a service works, well, here you have an example and you can actually right click, click and download this drawing to take a closer look at the Visio file, which is uh, behind this. And you have a whole bunch of other tab pages with all kinds of um, uh, features that are available for uh, all kinds of goodies we have in our uh, data miner cube interface available. Now, not to go too far uh, ahead, let's uh, take this step by step, of course. Um, we will start from a uh, brand new uh, view that we created previously and assign a graphical presentation there step by step. First of all, uh, let me also note that um, we do have in DataMire Cube a uh, functionality that basically reads out that Visio file and makes that graphical presentation. Because in the previous module, Visual Overview, where we were just looking at the graphics and the functionality available, we didn't require Microsoft Visio. So you do not need Microsoft Visio just to look at the system and just to operate it on a daily basis. You only require Microsoft Visio once you want to create a graphical presentation. So in this module, we do require Microsoft Visio to be able to create those graphical presentations. Though, so this also means that it is possible that you create a graphical presentation in Microsoft Visio, and it might be a little bit different in uh, DataMiner Cube. Of course, we will add color coding and uh, all kinds of uh, dynamic content uh, in DataMiner Cube, but sometimes certain features uh, might not be uh, exactly the same. So uh, if you have certain things that are not working out well, uh, you can always contact us as well, of course.
because datamire cube has basically its own rendering engine for uh, rendering those video files now uh, the first thing uh, i want to uh, show you is uh, some of the basic uh, linking that we will do so what we will do is we will uh, exercise do some exercises and we will link to another view which will add color coding like usa here or link to another element or a service I will also show you how to link to like uh, a uh, URL or a hyperlink, an executable or a file, or uh, also very interesting is to automation scripts, uh, because then you can just have a button there that executes an automation script. Also uh, very interesting is of course real-time data. That's very popular. You want to show some metrics on the, on the display immediately. So uh, adding that real-time data is uh, very valuable of course. Uh, also the name of the elements and the name of the view and things like that will be uh, important. Also briefly mention uh, some uh, examples on uh, dynamic content like rotating, flipping X, Y uh, axis or uh, doing a show height. So if you want to nicely immediately visualize how a signal flows through your system through a backup or a main path you can uh, nicely do that with uh, rotation or with show height uh, kind of uh, dynamic behavior in your visual file so we will use some of those uh, basic features here that I mentioned in our um, exercises now how do we get started uh, we will need to use that right click menu it's also available in the hamburger menu of your uh, cards so we will assign a graphical presentation to a uh, view that we previously created so let's check out that right click menu so um, we do have the editing uh, options in there uh, the first one is edit mode that basically makes your data miner cube transition to an edit mode and the edit mode is made to link certain um, shapes of your uh, graphical presentation to the correct element or the correct view of your data miner system. So that's to do the linking. So that's for the second step. Um, so the linking is for the second step. Um, first, we need to create some kind of graphical presentation. Eh? We need to create a, like a flow uh, of uh, all the different uh, systems after each other in a nice graphical presentation. And therefore, we uh, will do that in uh, uh, Visio. So we can just right click on a uh, view and uh, go for edit in Visio if there is already a visual file assigned to it let's uh, check out our system for a second here so if i go to an existing drawing like uh, the belgium map here i can right click on there and i get, can go to edit in visio if i go to my brand new view that i created in the previous modules uh, easy again with my two devices in there uh, that i created previously i do see a graphical presentation and that's actually one which is hard-coded and default in the system. So I cannot touch that one. Um, I can right-click and I don't see the edit in Visio or edit mode available here because that's one which is uh, hard-coded into the system. So we are not able to change it here. Well, you are able to change it on the Datamire agent itself. Um, it shows you basically the, the, the Isaham site here with the sub views, the sub elements and the services, but I want to make it uh, a little bit more realistic for how my uh, uh, site looks like. So I want to change it. So how can I change it? I cannot do an edit, but I do have set as active visio file here. And in there I have three options available also indicated here in the slide. Well, actually this one has a sec, uh, set as active visio file, custom and general default. Well, why is that? Well, if I go back and I go to Belgium, I can actually switch it back, uh, this one, set as active visio to the general default, the baked, uh, hard-coded uh, graphical presentation. So if you ever customized a drawing uh, of a certain object in Datamire, you can always switch back to the general default. Uh, so once you have a drawing, you can switch back to the general default as well. But I'm interested in adding a new drawing. So I basically have three options uh, available to start uh, with uh, assigning a graphical presentation to my object. The first one is a new blank, and that's the one I will use in my demo. 
because I don't have any drawing. I want to just start, uh, start with a blank drawing. I start from scratch, so I will leverage that new blank. But if you already have a drawing available on your uh, desktop, for instance, because you previously created something, um, then you can just go for new upload. Uh, you select it from your desktop and it will immediately assign it to your uh, object, your view, your element. What is existing? Um, existing actually allows you to um, use an existing drawing of the data miner system. Basically meaning you can reuse one visual over or one visio file across different sites for instance if i have like 100 sites and they are all quite similar i can actually create one graphical presentation in microsoft visio make sure it's uh, using dynamic behavior uh, with the wildcard star you can link to the correct elements that are inside that site if i created that drawing i can just go for the next uh, view or the next site and use existing and select that same drawing and apply it to the second view and the 100 views, for instance, that I have, all use the same visual file. So you can uh, use an existing one uh, and reuse the same visual file across different um, views. Um, I will go for a new blank, but uh, before I do so, uh, let me uh, switch back. Yeah, there's also the download Visio file. I, I already mentioned that um, during my demo on linking shapes. So you can always just download a, a copy of the Microsoft Visio file onto your computer uh, for uh, archiving purposes, or if you want to check something offline, you can download the Visio file uh, easily. Um, now, before I um, go and assign a drawing to my Isahem view, um, I will work on a view. It is a little bit different if you work on an element, because if you work on an element, you can have a graphical presentation like for this Microsoft uh, server here. If you right click on an um, element, you will notice that you can actually uh, set an active uh, visual file for the protocol or for the element itself. Typically, for a pro, uh, you work on a protocol level because this Microsoft Server 1 has this graphical presentation, but the second Microsoft Server or any Microsoft Server in my uh, system will always use that same graphical presentation. So typically, you work on a protocol level. That's why we saw in the protocols module that you can also assign over there a graphical presentation for your um, protocol. So any Microsoft server uses that uh, graphical presentation. And in here, we also have uh, a an, an general default, but uh, here we now also have a protocol default. That is something that uh, Skyline can provide together with the uh, driver. Uh, the general default, um, I can quickly show you somewhere. Uh, else let me check if i have an example here um, or let me go to this one i know that this one has uh, some uh, this is uh, something that doesn't have a graphical presentation so that's the default that is coming out of it you can see the number of alarms one critical one warning it's an uh, hpa it has some more details on the protocol the alarm template etc uh, so that's a general default uh, uh, a protocol de uh, a general default for an element uh, there is also a possibility that we provide you with a protocol default together with the protocol. So be aware if you're working on an element, you typically work on a protocol and all the elements using that protocol are using that same graphical presentation. So any Microsoft server has this graphical presentation. But I'm going to create a graphical presentation for my Isahem site. Uh, this site has uh, two servers and I want to create an, uh, another graphical presentation than the default that we have here in front of us. So how do I get started? Make sure you select your site that you want to change. Um, so that's the Isahem one. You right click on the drawing. You go for set as active visual file. And there we have those options. Uh, you can take one from your computer, but I'm going to go for a new blank drawing. And if I click on this button, what happens? 
first to confirmation. Are you sure you want to assign uh, a new drawing to EasyGAM? Yes, I'm sure. What happens, it basically downloads a template drawing from your data miner system. I immediately have it here in front of me assigned to EasyGAM. It also contains the name of the site and just a gray uh, panel where I can start uh, making a graphical presentation. And in meantime, it automatically opened here in the background Microsoft Visio with this drawing open. Let me change the uh, zoom level here that it fits the window. Uh, so I have a graphical presentation uh, immediately here available in Microsoft Visio. And now the magic can happen if I go for uh, the rectangle tool, for instance, and I draw a uh, rectangle on here. Uh, a graphical presentation, for instance. As soon as I hit save, Dataminer Cube notices that it changed. It automatically uploads the drawing onto your Dataminer system and everybody watching this EasyHAM view immediately sees the update. So if I want to, let's go back to the pointer tool. If I want to add another uh, item there, I copy paste another one, I hit save and immediately it's being updated. So that's how easy it is to assign a new drawing to your uh, graphic, uh, to your view, and to easily tweak that. Now, um, let me just close this. If tomorrow I come back to this drawing and I want to change something again, I can just right click on there. I can uh, click on the edit in Visio. I no longer need to uh, add a new blank one now, of course, because I already started uh, with something. So now I need to uh, say edit in Visio. It downloads the drawing again onto your computer and you have it again here. And I can uh, create, uh, for instance, another one uh, underneath there, hit save. And now I already have three uh, items on there. So remember, if you ever, uh, for instance, see here, let's say in Belgium, oh, uh, this DMA info uh, item that is here, I want to have it somewhere else, or I want to add another one, you just uh, right click, edit in Visio, it opens up that uh, drawing. So you can just take this one, uh, you move it to the upper uh, right hand side. Let me make sure that it's a little bit positioned well. Uh, I hit save and I just changed that positioning there. So that's how easy it is to just uh, change something on an existing drawing. If you ever need to start from blank or start from an existing drawing, remember you have that set as active video, new video, new blank and new upload or reuse one from another uh, video file or another view. So that's how I can start and create something nice, something, uh, 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 a nice graphical presentation, like a complete flow of all the uh, uh, systems that are involved for my site here, or a rack overview, or a geographical overview, a map overview. You can create all kinds of nice things in uh, Microsoft Visio. So you can leverage all the goodies uh, from Microsoft Visio to create something compelling. Now, so we uh, just assigned a blank one to our uh, EasyHAM site, and I just added a couple of uh, rectangles on there. That's all, that's it, nothing more. But of course, I want to link now those uh, objects, those rectangles to something in data miner, my elements, my uh, other sites uh, that I have in there, um, etc. So that is something we will do uh, with the shape data, because let's take a look at uh, the uh, shapes that are available in uh, Microsoft Visio. So let's go back to Microsoft Visio, just right click, edit in Visio. And um, in uh, Visio, there is something called shape data. I actually already have this window open here, shape data. And uh, that's a standard feature of uh, Microsoft Visio. If I would uh, go for a stencil, so here I have the shapes window and I can go, for instance, for uh, network computers and I just uh, take a computer on there, you will see that a computer has things like a um, asset number, serial number, a manufacturer, these kind of things. So that's additional data, you could say, that you can attach to a shape. 
if we just uh, make a rectangle here, there is no shape data yet. Note, if you don't have this window open, you can just right click on the shape and go for data, shape data, and then it will appear. Or also in the view menu, in the task panes, you can decide whether you show, oh, that's the shapes there. Uh, you can show the shape data, yes or no. Note, I'll come back to the advanced editing. Uh, that is something which is in the add-in. The advanced editing is available uh, to show height in the add-in. That's a special add-in from Data Miner that is appearing there. I'll come back to that. So remember, I, I find it quite convenient there to have that uh, shape data uh, panel open. So whenever I select something, like let's check out the star we have here, this text field, the title field uh, that uh, appears as uh, uh, Isahem here uh, in my drawing. Well, actually, you can see that there is some shape data defined to that. So that's the way how data miner can know that this is linked to a view and that it needs to show the view name and it's apparently disabled so that you cannot click on it. So that's how we can actually link certain items, uh, shapes in uh, Visio to your um, objects in data miner. Now, um, a small side note is that uh, previously this was called uh, custom uh, properties. Uh, so uh, these days it's uh, a Visio file is a VSDX. We do actually also still support that VDX format as well. We do not support the VSD, uh, the old uh, binary format, because that was proprietary. So it needs to be the XML version, uh, the VDX or the VSDX, the newer one. So we will leverage that uh, shape data and we will basically define in there that it needs to be linked to an element, a view, a service, a parameter. And there's a whole series of these uh, properties uh, or shape data that I can assign to the uh, objects. We will see that in the online editing, this will be a little bit uh, uh, simplified, but let me show you by, uh, for instance, uh, taking this first rectangle and just uh, say, like, um, how do you define now uh, shape data here? Uh, you need to right click here in the, uh, make sure you select the correct shape, of course, right click in here and then go to define shape data. And then you can uh, choose a label that is known in the data miner system, for instance, elements and just OK. And you can uh, change the content here. So um, how can we link uh, to an element? Um, well, um, we'll see in the, in the online editing, this, going, this is going to be easier, but I can actually just show you the manual way here. I can just take the name, for instance, of this element and put it in there. And maybe for the second one, what I will do is also define element on there. And I will do it a little bit smarter for this one. Oh, where's my properties window? I will actually use the ID. So you can link two ways to an element. It is always recommended to um, go for the ID because this way, if you would ever change the name of this element, uh, it would actually um, not be impacted. So you can see both of them are linked to the training Microsoft BERT 1 and the training Microsoft BERT 1, but one is linked using the name in there and the other one using the ID in there. So that's how you can easily uh, link uh, to a uh, shape. But We'll come back to that with the online editing there. You can just select it from a drop down. I just want to show you how it works and uh, how uh, it is being stored here. Um, if you want to know more about all the different um, shape data that is available, you can actually check the help. If you go for the help, uh, you will find a uh, section in there uh, underneath the um, basic data miner functionality, the Visio drawings. Uh, you will see all the, the, the linking you can do to a view, to a, uh, an element, uh, an alarm, uh, a web page, all these kind of things nicely documented how this needs to be done uh, with the, the view uh, shape data and the view ID or the view name. But uh, there is also, oh, 
uh, in here the reference, for instance, and an overview of all the shape data. And there you can see everything that DataWiner supports. So you can see this is a long list of uh, all the different possibilities. We are not able to cover all of it. We'll just do the basic things like linking to an element, uh, for instance, or a view. Okay, so uh, we are able to uh, create a um, uh, like a graphical presentation, a rectangle. Uh, we are able to define shape data on there and actually to already do a manual link to an element. Uh, that's already a good first step we have now. Okay, uh, one, uh, some other things that I want to mention on the shape data. Um, if you have grouping of um, shapes, for instance, uh, this would be a group because it has a whole bunch of uh, different uh, sub shapes in there. Um, always note if you create something like that and uh, you uh, combine uh, several shapes together by selecting all of them and then do a group, you need to link to an element or a view on the parent shape, on the group shape. Um, I'll show that also in my final example at the end of this module, uh, but you can actually then right click and uh, open up a, the PC, for instance, here, the, this group, and then change this uh, drawing, make it a little bit more uh, modern uh, display, for instance, by uh, making the bezels a little bit smaller, uh, not too small. Uh. Uh, anyhow, so you can change uh, a drawing uh, easily uh, by opening it up or a group. And then be aware if I'm now inside the group, you need to click on the small cross, not to close the application, uh, but to close this group. And then you go back and now I have the, the new monitor uh, here available. But the group still remains the same. If you ever ungroup, uh, then you have to be careful because then you're destroying the group and it's gone. Um, I'll, lever, uh, I'll show that also in my example. So be aware of that grouping. It's very um, interesting to group uh, shapes uh, together because then you have one object and then you can easily move that, you can easily tweak that uh, and just group the whole or link the whole group to an element, for instance. That's what we will do in our final example. That's just a side note on uh, that grouping. Uh, be aware of that uh, grouping. Now, uh, an, uh, an interesting uh, item here also is the star. Because if I go back to my um, uh, data miner cube uh, here, um, I still have my properties open. I actually see two of my Microsoft elements there, but it's only in the tooltip that it shows the name. So how can you show dynamic content coming from data miner, like the name of an element, the name of a view, or also, for instance, real-time data then that we will also uh, do? Well, actually, uh, we need to use the placeholder star. You can already see that here in the title. Uh, we need to use uh, a star. And then uh, in this case, it shows the view name and the star is being replaced then with the name of our view. If I would change the Isaham site to another name, this would nicely follow. So it's always recommended, of course, to use that dynamic um, content because if you would hard code the name of your element or your site or your view uh, or service inside your Visio files, if you ever change something in your data miner system, the Visio files will not follow because you hard coded that into the Visio files. So always try to use those stars and link it to the name of your element, the name of your view, etc. And of course, here you can uh, also play then with, uh, for instance, uh, the font size. If you want to make it a little bit bigger, uh, let's make it bigger. And now uh, my Isham is a little bit bigger. So the star is basically the placeholder defining the font, the size, the color, etc. And it's dynamically replaced at runtime. So that star will come back in our exercises. Uh, we'll uh, take a closer look at that. Now, um, Let's take a look now at the um, editing uh, window also that we have there, the advanced editing and the, um, shapes, uh, the shapes that we have available in our stencils. So um, I did mention previously that we do have the advanced editing uh, as well next to the shape data. So what's the big difference? The shape data is the window coming from uh, Microsoft Visio itself 
and it shows the shape data of your selected object. The advanced editing does exactly the same, but it is a component of Dayminer Cube. It only works if you work uh, if you start your Visio from Dayminer Cube. Dayminer Cube is controlling this session of Visio. Um, and therefore it hooks in here and it shows you those items as well, but it allows you to easily add, for instance, shape data, any of the known properties or shape data is available here. All the different labels that Datamire knows uh, is available here. And you do have certain validation uh, that we can uh, add in there. And also, for instance, if I open up the square brackets, uh, it shows me all the placeholders that I can have uh, here. So uh, it helps you out a little bit here and there to do certain uh, things. Uh, but anyhow, um, uh, that's uh, basically the same thing, but a little bit smarter, you could say. Let me just undo my changes. Ooh. Okay. Now, um, I also want to mention that uh, we from uh, uh, the data miner cube immediately provide you with some stencils as well. So if you start the drawing from data miner cube, and if we go to the stencils, uh, let's take a, a look at that. Uh, so here at the right hand side, I have the shapes window open. Uh, so that's a task pane shapes here. I have that uh, window already open and there are stencils available from Microsoft uh, with, uh, for instance, things like uh, network uh, equipment or um, some scheduling uh, general stuff. So you can play around with that. And we do have also a data miner section there. So um, we do have some uh, shapes readily available in those stencils here, like for instance, uh, a KPI. Uh, let's open up KPI. Be aware, our KPI uh, and some of those stencils actually use uh, macros uh, to do some uh, uh, dynamic uh, generation of the sub items there. Uh, so um, don't be afraid of it. Uh, you can just enable the macros from those data miner stencils. Um, and then you can, uh, for instance, have a KPI with icon. Let's take a look at that. Well, it gives me a nice graphical presentation. Let's zoom in a little bit uh, with an icon and a parameter description and a star. And I can immediately start linking this to an element and to a parameter. Now uh, it has a certain icon. Well, actually you saw maybe here in the um, uh, available stencils, we also have icons available. So we have a whole series of uh, icons uh, available for our industry uh, with a lot of nice uh, graphical presentations there for typical things we might need there. Um, there is also some other things like, for instance, uh, some buttons, uh, some action buttons and things like that. Uh, the, the world maps, um, that's possible. You need to download that one separately uh, as well. That's also an interesting one where you can uh, actually just uh, have a quick, uh, for instance, uh, um, graphical uh, map of Australia in this case, for instance. Um, you can, of course, add any images as well from uh, the internet. Uh, you can uh, just take an image uh, of something and uh, upload it uh, or copy paste it into your graphical presentation, add your logo of your company and things like that as well, of course. Okay, so uh, make sure you leverage those stencils. There are many stencils available on the internet as well. Some vendors might even have some stencils available to immediately have a nice uh, graphical presentation for their equipment as well. Now, um, let's uh, take the next step because uh, we made a graphical presentation, uh, just a couple of rectangles, and now we want to link that to objects of the data miner system. Well, I mentioned you can do that in the edit mode. So in Visio, we create the graphical presentation. So the first step was we assigned a new blank and then we did an edit in Visio to add some rectangles. We know how that works now, but to link those rectangles to objects in data miner, I showed you briefly the manual way but actually I want to leverage the edit mode of Dateminer Cube. So let's check out that edit mode. If we enable the edit modes, uh, we will see this side panel on the right hand side. 
So, and uh, you can save the uh, changes you might make here and you can just exit and close the edit mode again with the uh, button on the lower right hand side. Now, what do you see in there? First of all, be aware you have two tab pages there. Um, be careful with that. You can do certain changes on the page itself, uh, not the, the shapes, uh, but the page itself has certain properties. But we are mainly going to be interested in the shapes. So uh, editing a shape, linking a shape to something in DataMiner. If you go to edit in shape, you can basically select any of the um, shapes on your drawing or use the drop down and you will see a preview of the selected shape and you can link it to something. So you select a shape on the top with a preview and at the bottom you link it to something in data miner. That's how simple it, it is and let's uh, take a look at that. Uh, this make shapes uh, selectable is going to be an important one. Let me show you the difference. Now I created uh, this graphical presentation and uh, I already manually, uh, let me scale that back. Um, I already manually linked the first element to my uh, Microsoft element one and actually this one to the same element using the ID. And this one is just still a blank rectangle. Let me remove that one for now. Okay, let's save that and let's uh, take a look at that. Well, actually maybe I shouldn't have saved that because I added an object here. And if I save that, you will notice that um, those two are nicely linked. This one is here just standing there, not linked. And this one is not being shown. Why is this one not being shown? Well, it is uh, linked to an element, this element, but this element is not found because we are linked to a view actually. So this element does not work. So if we don't find what we are looking for, we are going to, sh uh, to immediately hide that um, shape. That is interesting for dynamic shapes, uh, dynamic uh, drawings uh, that you want to reuse across different sites because maybe some sites have some equipment less and then you don't want to show uh, items which are not being linked, then you want to hide them. So uh, that as a side note. But what now? Uh, we want to change uh, because uh, Microsoft One, Microsoft One, no, that needs to be one and needs to be two. And I want to uh, link to another element or view uh, on this uh, uh, last item here. So how do I do the linking from whatever I created? Well, you right click and you go to edit mode. And on the right hand side, you see this edit panel popping up. And um, be aware you are on the page. Uh, let's check the edit shape. And I see all of the shapes here. Well, actually you can see them highlighted here as well. And I can click on Isigem. It selects uh, immediately the Isigem, a small star. Uh, it selects this rectangle, shape three, shape four. This one I cannot click. And this one popped up here and is showing uh, uh, here. So here I can link it now to, to, an, uh, to an element and uh, I can immediately start uh, working with it. So in the edit mode, it pops up so that you can link it to something. But the, the fourth one uh, or the third uh, rectangle here, it's not um, clickable and it's not in here as well. Um, well, actually, what is the sheet one, sheet three and sheet four? Well, if you click on there, you see here shape data, sheet three, sheet four, and this one is sheet five. So this is automatically generating uh, those names here. Um, small tip, if you wanna change this name, uh, you can actually do so uh, in the developer uh, tab. You can uh, change this shape name here and just change this uh, sheet.5 to something else. So if you wanna change that, for instance, to the Bert uh, item, so I changed the name of this shape. Now, um, the developer tab uh, in the ribbon here, you need to uh, specifically activate that by going to File, Options, Advanced, so file options advanced and then you scroll all the way down to run in developer mode. So if you run in developer mode, it will automatically show this tab page 
and there you have the possibility to shape the, to change the name of a shape which i just did for this one let me save that so that it is uh, applied so um let me uh, go back because i did a save here let me just quickly close and go back to the edit mode so that, so that my items are selectable again so um i'm able to to click on those items but not on the the bert uh, shape so sheet dot bert or the bert uh, shape is not in here well we don't show all the shapes in there only the ones that are uh, already having a known shape data uh, in uh, Visio. So those items have something that data miner recognizes, uh, this one as well. This one doesn't have it. Also the gray rectangle here, uh, which is just uh, a little bit of, of back background uh, chrome, uh, it's not being shown. So we're not showing everything just to make sure that this is not cluttered with uh, all kinds of small uh, maps and uh, uh, goodies that you want to uh, use to make a nice graphical presentation, but you don't want to link it. But if I do want to uh, take that uh, BERT uh, shape there, well, therefore you need to make all shapes selectable. And now I will see this BERT shape uh, uh, appearing here and I can actually select this one. And uh, so I can, I'm able to select now uh, this shape. So uh, we were uh, trying to link it to something. So you select your shape or you select it from the drop down. Once you have selected the shape, you can link it to something. So I can link it to an element. Well, actually, uh, that's perfect. And uh, let's link it to my training Microsoft uh, BART 1. No, let's take the BART 2. Let's save we can now see that this one is linked. So maybe close the edit mode that we have the tooltips available. So that's Microsoft element one. That's the, also the one of course. And now we linked with this one with the online editing to the second device. So if you uh, want to uh, link to something, uh, think about that edit mode, you just select your object and you link it to the first. This one, if you want to change that, you can easily change that. Uh, let's say that we want to uh, link it to an IRD, uh, save that, and we immediately have that linked to another element. But now we don't see the name of the element. So um, how can we add the name of the element there as well? Let's go back to our uh, Visio file, because uh, remember that we need to define something there with a star to actually show where we want to see it, where it is positioned. Uh, so if you double click on a, a rectangle, you go into the text editing and then you can say like, oh, maybe I want to add something like name, colon, space, star, where the star is, it will change uh, that uh, name, of course, or input that name. But uh, maybe I want to have it left aligned, uh, top aligned. Um, I can change the font here as well, if you want to make it a little bit bigger or smaller, uh, etc. So you can uh, def nicely define name and star, and there we will have the name. If we save that and we go here, we see name and nothing. The star is not replaced yet because we still need to define what needs to be shown in that dynamic content uh, placeholder there. So uh, let's uh, select this shape. So we have the name.star. Here you see the actual uh, thing of uh, we developed and uh, created in Visio. Um, and we see actually that there is an additional field here, info, with the other one. I don't have that uh, and the other one as well. So this one, since it detected the star, it actually says like, oh, you want to show some information there and I can show all kinds of information and I'm interested in the element name. So all kinds of things like the, the, the IP address and the protocol name and all these kind of things. I'm just going to show the name, click on save. And now we have the name of the uh, element there displayed. Um, so never hard code names, make sure you use that uh, star and you select it from here. Now, so I can easily link to an element and if it contains a star, uh, I can easily uh, also select something to show there like the element name. I'll come back to the stars because uh, you can see there's a lot of info you want to show. If you want to show something more, 
um, you need to have more than one star uh, basically, but you can only have one star in one text field. So then we need to go to that grouping and I'll show that in the final uh, example uh, or exercise. Then I will have different text fields and also some of them I will link to real time data, group that together and that's gonna be my element. Um, but I'll come back to that more elaborate example on the element for now. I have my elements, my color coding. Uh, if I close the edit mode, it's hyperlinked. I can click on there and go to the um, actual device and I can display the name. Perfectly fine. Okay, uh, let's go back to the edit mode. Now, uh, maybe I'll just uh, add another rectangle there. Um, just uh, make a new one, uh, a copy paste of the existing one and save that in Visio and it immediately appears here, of course. I did a copy paste, so it, of course it's uh, linked already to something, but this one I don't want to link to an element. I want to check out some of the other stuff. Um, so the um, sheet uh, BERT.6, so if your selection is not okay anymore, you close the edit mode and you go back to the edit mode and then you can make sure that this one is here, the selected one. So it's linked to an element, um, but let's check out what else we have. So linking to a view. Yeah, that's an interesting one. So uh, let's link to a view and I want to link, for instance, to the, the top level view. Uh, that's uh, Belgium, which is uh, here on top so that I can go back to my route easily. And I can also uh, visualize the uh, view name, but uh, then I will need to add a star there as well. And I'll leave this one uh, centered uh, in there. So let's. Uh, oh. I now did two edits together. Uh, so let me just quickly uh, retake this one. Sheet, uh, it has the star now, linking to the view, linking to the view Belgium. Because I saved my uh, Visio, it actually jumped out of my uh, changes here. View name, let's save that. And now I have my Belgium uh, view uh, linking to my roots, my top level view, uh, because Isaham is inside Belgium. So I can easily go back to the higher level view. So that's how you can easily link to a view. You select the view and if you have a star, you can also visualize the uh, view name immediately in there, dynamically added. Um, what else do we have available? Let's add an, another uh, placeholder there or rectangle. So I link to an element, to a view. You can do the same thing for a service. Eh? Then you have uh, the uh, all the services in here, like uh, BBC, Eurosport. Uh, so you can just play around with that one yourself as well. An automation script, uh, we didn't go into automation scripts yet. Um, this module uh, comes up in an advanced uh, uh, video. Um, but um, here you can uh, basically just link to an automation script and configure it here in the pop-up. Uh, so you need to select any of the existing uh, automation scripts you created. Uh, let's just pick one, IRD toggle LMB for instance. And typically you might have certain uh, things that are needed to be able to execute the automation script, like uh, on which IRD uh, do we need to uh, execute this. Um, if you don't specify it here and you execute the automation script, it will ask for which uh, device you want to execute this uh, toggle uh, on. Uh, if you immediately specify it in here and you make sure, for instance, that um, there is also an option there uh, to don't show a confirmation uh, when user click the uh, shape. If you would even do it like this, then um, you basically have a button that you just, uh, did I do it on this one? No, oh, never mind. You just have a button where you can basically click on it and it uh, automatically executes that. Um, and actually it is probably executing here. Let me check. The information events. No, it is not executing. Uh, I need to close the edit mode. Now I can execute the automation script and you can see the LMB one supply is being toggled on and off. So um, it is now linked to it. So maybe I should, ju should just name this a set or a toggle that I just created, give it a more meaningful name. So if I click on there uh, on the set, it executes the toggle on a predefined um, 
uh, device that I selected in the Visio file itself. So that's how you can uh, easily link uh, something to an automation script. And if you define all the necessary details, like the dummies and the parameters or memory files, this one only needs a dummy. If you define everything in there, you can immediately execute it. It will ask for a confirmation unless you say, don't show the confirmation, then it is just a single click execute. Um, so that's quite useful there. Okay, so let me uh, take another one and uh, save this one and take the next one here. So I create yet another one. And this one, uh, I will take a look, what else do we have? So the execute, uh, a single parameter set is also available. This element, this parameter, this value can also be done without creating an automation script. So instead of needing to rely on an automation script once more, uh, you can just develop that uh, or uh, define that all in here. Um, there are some more, um, some of them more advanced, but uh, the, the one that I want to show here as well is uh, a link. Um, so you can link uh, to an uh, application, to the video or to a web page. Uh, so if you say like, oh, I want to link to uh, HTTPS uh, www.google.com. And if I um, save it like this, let me save it, close the edit mode. Uh, this is now just a uh, button. I should probably say uh, uh, something like eh, Google uh, link is in here. Save that. So now, now it makes more sense. So I can just uh, click on there and it basically opens up a web browser on my first screen here um, to the uh, Google website. There is also, I don't know if you noticed, if you go back to the edit mode, if you select it again, show inside shape. Well, let's check it out. And now it's a little bit too small. So let me make that a little bit bigger in my um, Visio file here. So I can actually do it like this. And then you will see that you can actually have uh, the, I agree the Google website in there. So you can actually embed a website uh, inside your uh, drawing there as well. So either you link to it or you show it uh, embedded. So that's uh, some of the basic uh, linking that I wanted to, to mention to an element, uh, to a view, to a, an automation script, to a visual file or uh, a document, these kind of things. So you can easily select your shape uh, in the edit mode and select what it needs to link to. With an element in my final uh, exercise in this video, I will do and take it a step further to have some uh, parameter real-time data there as well. Uh, I'm coming back to that. Remember, if it's not linked anywhere yet, uh, make sure that you don't forget about that make all shapes selectable and then you can actually um, uh, select it from the dropdown uh, as well. Now, so some, so those were some of the uh, things that I uh, have covered already. Uh, so some of that linking that I just showed you uh, to an element, to a view, an automation scripts, etc. cetera. Uh, briefly, we saw already with the alarm filters. Uh, so same thing in the system center underneath tools, you do have cleanup unused. We saw the alarm filters. You have it available for protocols as well. Uh, because a Visio file can be used across different views, you can reuse a Visio file. Uh, basically, if you remove a Visio file from a view, it is not being removed uh, from the data miner system. Uh, so it's not deleted. So it remains there available uh, so that you can uh, later on pick it up on another view. Uh, so um, it is possible that there are uh, some views or VDX files or Visio files on your data miner system, which are currently not being used. You can actually check uh, which ones you can uh, load. Uh, you see all of them. Uh, you can just select uh, or do a multiple selection and delete them if that would be necessary. You can do so. Now, what I will do is I will uh, wrap it up with a exercise and some more um, examples. Uh, in our exercise, I want to make a group of shapes and uh, I will show some real-time data of several parameters 
and maybe some LEDs and uh, a group shape and link that all uh, to uh, a Microsoft elements that we have here um, in our exercise. So we'll do that uh, with uh, the online editing uh, and the child shapes that are going to be uh, important here. So uh, let's take a look how we can do that with also some alarming on the LEDs. So let's go back and uh, let's uh, forget about this first page that we created with some uh, examples. We will create in Visio a second tab page. So we can easily do so by clicking on the plus sign. And uh, then I created a second page. If I save that, you will see that you now have in uh, DataMiner Cube also page one and page two. So uh, that's our uh, first attempt and that's our um, uh, advanced uh, example, you could say. Um, it's not that advanced yet, but so you can make it, give it a more meaningful name, of course, your tab pages. Now, what I want to do is uh, I want to show some uh, real-time data of my Microsoft platform, and I want to all group that together and link it to that. So what I will do is I will create, uh, let's say, a, a graphical presentation for my uh, Microsoft server. And um, what I want to do is I want to add, uh, not on the shape itself, let me go back there. Uh, I want to add a text field there uh, on the top. Allez. Text field there on the top. Let's already put the star in there. Okay, um, it, that's going to be the, the name of the um, uh, elements that I'm going to uh, put in there. So this one can be a little bit bigger. Uh, so I'm going to bump up the font size a little bit and make it left aligned as well. Um, and maybe underneath it, uh, let me control C, control V, copy this one. And maybe underneath it, I want to show in a little bit a smaller uh, font uh, the IP address of the server. Uh, so I need two text fields uh, to uh, be able to show that uh, the name of the device and the IP address uh, that I want to show. And of course, I want to show some key uh, metrics and uh, I want to uh, show there the, uh, let's say, control C, control V, the CPU utilization. And um, Actually, I want to show what the actual alarm state is of the CPU utilization as well. So I'm going to put an, uh, uh, a small LED in front of it uh, as well that visualizes the actual state of uh, my um, uh, CPU uh, load. And actually, I want to do uh, the same thing now, but for my... Um, Memory utilization, for instance, maybe you have another parameter that you want to uh, show there. So I want to show two parameters, uh, both with an, uh, with an LED. Okay, so you can play around with uh, making sure that everything is aligned and leverage the features uh, from uh, Microsoft Visio here for positioning uh, and aligning uh, those items. Uh, but uh, that's something you can play with. Okay, so that's going to be it. And um, basically, let's say that I want to group now everything because I think I'm uh, happy with the result here. So I select all of it. So you can just uh, click and drag to select uh, everything. You right click on it and you group uh, everything. Okay, so uh, that's my... Uh, graphical presentation for my Microsoft. So then I can easily uh, move this now as one uh, item or grouped uh, shape and uh, easily copy paste it as well, etc. Now let's save that and let's take a look in our DataMiner Cube. It's all uh, not linked yet, so we need to start doing uh, the linking in DataMiner Cube uh, once more like we did before. So we right click on there, we go to the edit mode, Watch out, edit page uh, is the default selected. We need to go to edit shape. And you can see there is a sh uh, sheet.10 uh, available because I have my make all shapes selectable already uh, activated. If this would not be activated, um, let me go back to edit shape. There is nothing. 
there is nothing on this uh, page which is known by the data miner system, which has a known uh, shape data. So it doesn't show any selectable shape. Make sure uh, all shapes are selectable, allows you to um, pick up any uh, shape of your um, system there. And that's the group here, the sheet.10, which is available. The sub items are going to be available uh, here in the selected charge shape. I'll come back to that. So we select our uh, shape and we link it to, you can select from the drop down or you can start typing training Microsoft BART01. That's perfect. And uh, actually, um, I can, I guess, already save that to take a look at it. Uh, so it's going to be linked, but nothing is populated yet uh, of those uh, items there. And What's the nice thing now in this preview here, you can select all of those or click on all of those uh, items. So here, the first star on the top, the, the bigger uh, font there, I wanted to display the name so I can select this one. And um, you can see it's linked to my Microsoft, uh, training Microsoft BART one. Yeah? And you have the selected child shape, which is sheet.4. If I select the, the next star is sheet.5. And if I would verify and double check here, um, note because this is grouping, if I select on the first star here, it selects the group. And if I click again, then I select the sheet.4. And this is sheet.5, so that is correct. So that's the behavior of a group. If you click on something that is grouped, you first select the group. And if you click again, then you see still a dotted uh, selection there. Uh, then you select the subshape. Okay, that was just double checking that it's uh, sheet four and sheet five. So sheet four is the information element name and the um, sheet five the next star is going to be uh, watch out not the ip but the polling ip and let's save that and that's uh, remember just 127.001 that is uh, being uh, displayed there so okay that's already perfect um but uh, the star next to the first led that's not information but that's a parameter that I want to show in there. So I can easily link it here to the total processor load. We actually renamed it to CPU loads. Uh, okay. CPU load. Let's uh, save that and let's verify. And do we have the CPU load? Yes, 4.5. And let's immediately do the last one as well. Uh, the last star there, we're going to link that to... Um, that's the uh, physical memory usage. Uh, yeah, that's also in percentage, how much of the uh, physical memory that is being used, uh, how much of the RAM is being used. Uh, let's save that. And you can actually see uh, the, let me close the edit mode that you can nicely see it. We have the CPU utilization and memory. Actually, now I realize this is not uh, very uh, 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 nicely to see that this is the CPU and this is the uh, memory usage. So I should add CPU colon star uh, and for the next one, uh, mem colon space star, save it. And now it's going to be clear that I'm talking here about CPU utilization and memory utilization. Perfect. Uh, but the color coding is not correct yet, but because everything is still uh, in the uh, overall alarm state of my element. Okay, so uh, how can we uh, fill that LED there with the uh, parameter uh, state of the parameter uh, CPU utilization? Well, let's go once more to our edit mode, select that object, uh, that shape, and select now the LED, the, cir the circle, which is going to be my LED. So I select the first circle and um, the selected ch uh, child shape is uh, apparently sheet.7. Um, yeah, I can no longer link it to info because there's no star, there's no uh, possibility to display text, but I can still link it to a parameter. So I can also here link it to uh, the CPU uh, load uh, or total processor load, we named it CPU load. 
but now you actually have to um, uh, explain to data miner what needs to happen uh, when it links to the CPU load. And therefore, you have some options you can configure here. Uh, you can basically define actions, uh, which that's the dynamic behavior. And you can add a new action by clicking on the plus sign. And uh, it's uh, by default adding a show. You can do a show height based on the arguments. For instance, uh, do a show if it's greater than 50%. Uh, so if I'm above 50%, you can like show an exclamation mark uh, to, to uh, uh, indicate that we are uh, above average, for instance. So that's how you can easily show something when uh, my uh, value is going too high. So then you would say show uh, greater than, um, uh, yeah, let's say 50, for instance. If I would do that, Note you have more information in the help uh, uh, about the arguments and things like that and the correct formatting. If I would do that, it would not show it because the CPU load is uh, basically lower. So what I, and actually I don't want to do sh show height of the LED. I want to do a alarm. I want to link to the alarm. There's no arguments needed for that. I want to show the alarm color of the CPU load, not of the complete elements, as only of that single parameter in that LED. Let's close that and um, let's uh, already save that. And we will see that this is now green because uh, if I would open up my um, Microsoft in, in pop-up, and if I go there, you can see that it's in warning, but actually it's in warning because the total handles is in a, a warning alarm. My CPU load is perfectly fine. And actually my physical memory usage is also perfectly fine. So we still need to link the second LED. Let's do it once more. You select the LED and you go for the parameter, in this case, the uh, physical memory usage, and we configure it. Uh, we don't want to do dynamic behavior like show height, but do an alarm. Let's close that and let's save that. And let's now close the edit mode for a second. Perfect. So I see that actually my CPU and my memory is in a lot, uh, is uh, perfectly normal state, uh, but I do have an alarm and I can check the, the details that this is the threats uh, that are in alarm. Yeah, um, but actually I don't want this uh, full background color coding with the warning. Uh, it's a little bit uh, too much. Well, there are, uh, the, you do have the possibility to um, remove the background color coding from here as well. So if you select once, you have the group. If I select once more, I now have the rectangle selected, uh, not to any of the text field, but the rectangle. And I can change the fill to no fill save that and now i basically get rid of the alarm color coding because it's actually transparent but that's not good as well because now i don't i no longer see the overall state of my elements so i will need to add uh, something again to show the overall state of my elements um so i now want to edit this uh, group because the last thing i want to do is uh, doing a uh, group ungroup because then I break it up again and uh, my properties that are on the group will be removed. And so I don't want to go there. So therefore, um, uh, Microsoft Fizi has this interesting feature that they added uh, to open a group. So I do have my uh, group selected. I go to group, open group. Now I dive into the group and I have my Microsoft um, uh, graphical presentation here. And I can add nicely, for instance, let's say that I will add an, uh, a small rectangle here uh, in front of it to indicate the overall state of my um, device or element uh, in there. To get out of this uh, edit, editing of the group again, you can see in the title, you're inside your sheet.10 group. Um, you need to close not the close visual, but to close the group, just the cross underneath the close of your application. You click on the close, you go out of it, and you're back here uh, in that uh, drawing. Now, um, if I save that, uh, that will already give me a perfect result. Uh, you can see um, it's do it's doing the color coding there. But let's say, yeah, the the this background rectangle 
click once, click twice. This background rectangle, I removed the fill, but actually I do like it to be a little bit, let's say, uh, like a gray uh, panel uh, like this, for instance. Sorry about that. Uh, a gray panel, uh, an, an, a, a gray panel in the background. So if I save that, the gray will of course also now be immediately picked up again to be color coded. So how can I fix that? Well, actually, if we go back to the edit mode and we select our uh, shape and we select the rectangle that I added here. And if we link this one to the parameter, let's open it up, star, which is basically everything which is basically the overall alarm state of my element. So if I link it to star and I configure also again the option alarm on there, close. So I say link it to star, to everything, to the alarm color coding. Then basically data miner is smart enough to say like, yeah, well, since you already showed the overall alarm state in that uh, shape that you, uh, or that shape that you selected uh, to display it in, I no longer need to do the fulfilling of uh, all the background uh, objects there. So that's how my uh, graphical presentation looks like. So it's linked to my Microsoft element. It shows the name, the IP address, CPU load, memory usage, real-time parameters. Some of the LEDs linked to a specific parameter, uh, the overall state displayed in here so that I can have a nice graphical uh, presentation. So that's how you can easily link to elements, to parameters uh, as subshapes there as well. So um, that's a little bit of a, a nice uh, example that I wanted to show you here. Uh, note this is uh, the start, uh, uh, getting started with uh, creating Visio files. Some of the basic things have been covered in this module. There are more modules and uh, there is an advanced course available on Dojo if you want to go a little bit more in depth. But with this session, we are now able uh, to uh, create a new drawing for our view. So we can upload an existing one or start from uh, scratch with a blank one. So remember, you can just right click edit in Visio to create your graphical representation in Microsoft Visio. You save it. Once you created that graphical presentation, we go in Data Miner Cube, go to the online editing, and over there we can just link all of the items, uh, all of the shapes to those objects we have in Data Miner. I hope it gave you a good start. There's lots of things you can further discover in this module, uh, and therefore we have that information readily available on Dojo for you. See you in the next one.